The Kansas City Chiefs in 2022 pulled off one of the greatest drafts we might ever see in terms of just the sheer number of starters and contributors they had this season. So uh, let's not, you know, uh, let's just get into it. Let's talk about the draft that they had. So this is the full list. You first have, uh, first I got to just let you know what's going on with this list. So uh, the, you know, the numbers from left to right. So like for Trent McDuffie at the top, he was drafted in the first round. That's what the one means. 21st overall pick. That's what the 21 means. And then 17 is where he was on the consensus big board prior to the draft. So I figured that could be a fun thing to look at as well as for someone like McDuffie, he was actually considered a bit of a, you know, a bit of a steal, not a huge deal, only four spots, but still him and Carl Loftus, the two first rounders that they had in that draft were two players who, you know, the general public liked a little bit more than the NFL did. And I think through one season, they both proved why they were successful. McDuffie was a really good corner for them, and he was a key piece of that defense. Carl Loftus, not quite as big of a contributor, but he was a contributor. He was a solid defensive lineman, and I expect that he will continue to get better as he gets older. I think his play style will fit for someone who, you know, year two, I think we could see a jump, but for those two players, uh, they definitely were contributors and definitely had an impact. And then, you know, what they did well was it wasn't just hitting on those, you know, first round picks. They just, they kept hitting on basically every round they drafted a player in, they got someone who could contribute. With the second round, they had two picks. They got Sky Moore with pick 54, who on the consensus big board, again, number 42. So their first three picks, they're picking guys who the general public was higher on than the NFL was. Uh, Sky Moore was, again, he was a contributor. Was he a star? No. Did he? I think you could even argue, I think maybe we were expecting a little more when this draft pick happened, but still it's okay because as long as you're getting just a lot of guys who can you know be a player for you. Brian Cook, another guy who he was considered a bit of a reach on the big board. I remember I actually loved him. I had him uh, as a top 64 prospect. I believe I had him as like a top 40 prospect on my big board. So uh, that's how I felt about him. And again, he played all right for them. He wasn't a star, but he was again, a solid contributor. So out of these first four selections, you have Really, I would say three solid contributors, three good role players, and then one just good starter in Trent McDuffie. And it continues with Leo Chanel at pick number 103. He was 64 on the big board. So again, uh, out of these five players, four of them were considered a lot better of prospects by the general public than what actually, when they actually got drafted. Chanel, I'm not going to say he was a superstar either. He was kind of their third uh, linebacker, but he was a good third linebacker. And their linebackers were really the reason that they won the Super Bowl in a sense. Or I shouldn't say that. Patrick Mahomes was the main reason. But, you know, uh, on defense, those were guys who were able to really come through and make plays against Philadelphia. They made Philadelphia feel as though they couldn't run the ball to run out the clock because how they kept making plays. And Chanel had a great Super Bowl. PFF had him rated as the second highest rated defender for Kansas City in that Super Bowl. So he definitely had an impact. Next up in the fourth round, uh, a guy who I think that, you know, really there's two players, him and Jalen Watson, who we'll get into in a second, uh, who's a little bit further down, those two corners, and we can kind of talk about them together. They didn't start necessarily the year and kind of took a little bit to fully become everyday players. But once they were, that's when we saw the defense kind of shift around a little bit. Those guys both had over 500 snaps on the year and towards the end of the year were big contributors once again. Joshua Williams uh, was, you know, again, he was pick 135. He was on a consensus big board, 139. So he wasn't someone who the general public was pounding the table for saying you got to draft him and they drafted him. They drafted him right around when people thought that he should be drafted. He felt like a fourth round pick in every sense of the wor word, but he didn't play like one. So again, you could argue, I think, how much of this is the Chiefs being good at drafting and how much of this is just luck. You know, there is some flukiness to it, right? I mean, you see some of these teams that they have one of these drafts and we think, oh man, they're great at drafting and then they never have one of them again. But then you have some of these teams that consistently do this and I think the Chiefs have done it for long enough now. I'm willing to say that there's at least, you know, a good chunk of it is because of skill, although there's probably some luck involved as well. Uh, but, you know, he was a big contributor. Darian Kennard was not. Darian Kennard, a guy who I liked out of college, actually, and a lot of people did. Again, 71st on the consensus big board. He just, uh, you know, he was drafted 145th, 
and he didn't play. Uh, so we don't know if he was a bad pick. He just he didn't get any playing time this year. So maybe he will find his way into a starting lineup at some point and be another contributor. So there's a chance with how good this draft has looked so far, they could get uh, you know another contributor here. You also have uh, Jalen Watson, who I talked about. He was a seventh rounder, but came in and, and played well for the Kansas City Chiefs. He really did. I mean, he was, uh, you know, I'm not going to say he was a star, but like, PFF had him out of 118 eligible corners. He was 72nd on the list, and then Joshua Williams was 66th. So neither one of those were stars necessarily, but when it comes to defensive backs, it's often a weak link position, and having two guys that combined for over 1,200 snaps, nearly 1,300 snaps on the season and can play solid football, yeah, that was a big difference maker. Of course, everyone, yeah, I think, talked about, you know, Pacheco, the seventh round pick. Uh, 250 players were selected in the draft before Isaiah Pacheco. And Pacheco, a great example of why you don't draft running backs in the first round, because sometimes you draft someone like Pacheco, who I'm sure the Chiefs did not think was going to play this well. If they did, they wouldn't have waited so long to draft him, I would assume, or maybe they just knew no one else would. But he came in and he was a force, uh, which just, it happens sometimes with running backs. Sometimes these running backs come in, no one expects anything of them, but then they're able to come in and play well. And I think it's a good strategy to, in you know, late in rounds, I mean, you get teams who are just drafting like special teamers now. You legitimately will get uh, scenarios where teams will draft long snappers in the seventh round. I don't know why you do that because why not draft a running back who could potentially give you actual value, uh, which is what the Chiefs did. So, you know, uh, last, uh, uh, Naziz Johnson, who, uh, you know, has also yet to have a snap in the NFL. Who knows how it will work out if he does get into the NFL, uh, you know, uh, consensus big board. He was barely a top 400 prospect there, but I don't know. They liked him. Uh, who knows what can happen? For what it's worth, he did play special teams and actually graded well on special teams. Uh, you know, his his PFF grade on special teams was an 85, which is a pretty good special teams grade. So he even had an impact in the special teams situation. So you know, hey, for a seventh round pick, not the worst selection as a whole. I think that it really can't be understated how valuable this was for Kansas City. I mean, there's the obvious situation of you legitimately got seven contributors who could come in and play well. Actually, excuse me, I miscounted. Eight contributors who came in and played well. Uh, you had your first five selections, or first six selections, and then also you had Jalen Watson and Isaiah Pacheco, two seventh rounders who came in. And, you know, I mean, I guess if you want to count the special teamer, you then had all but one of your players that you drafted out of the nine players you drafted come in and play well. And the other guy is someone who I think a lot of people feel like was underdrafted and could be better if he gets a, you know, gets an opportunity. You just, you never had to use him this year he was an offensive lineman so you know that's kind of where you're at right now and it's really again it can't be understated how valuable that is because not only do you get those players contributing but you get them on such low deals the way that you win in all sports you have to do two things first you have to get the stars which the Chiefs have you have Mahomes you have Travis Kelsey you got rid of a star in Tyreek Hill but you have you have stars you have Chris Jones you have the guys who you pay a significant chunk of the salary cap to and maybe even a couple guys who are given some money to that they probably shouldn't be like uh, Frank Clark who's a good player but not worth his contract in my opinion but the way that you're able to then make sure you can, can stay a competitive team because there are other teams with stars in the league is you have to find contributors for cheap that's it's the combination of those two things that allow you to be able to consistently win and getting a draft like this is exactly what they were able to do to not just be able to win a Super Bowl this year but all these players will be there for the next three seasons as well so because of that I mean you might even be able to get more cheap contributors in future drafts and this team should be very good for a very long time uh, that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.